well, well, well. What do we got here? Half drunken beer, per perchance. So, it's Friday night, but I. Oh man. Oh, uh, so. Got some disturbing news, right? Yeah, we sure did. Liv Morgan got injured. She's not gonna be on SmackDown for the foreseeable future. She's the only reason I watch SmackDown anymore. Uh, I don't know, they built her up and she was a champ for a while and then they just tossed her aside like a piece of garbage. I mean, I like Asuka. But, I don't know, they just, I just fell in love with Liv. So with that dark shadow casted over us, welcome to Friday night at Chateau Garth. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, a comic book review, but I got some books today from my good buddy Video Massacre. If I forget his videos, you tell him. This video is for the Grinks, the Groinks, the Spuds, and the Duds. So, listen up. So, Video Massacre, he sent me Brian Keane, Dead Sea. I had this book, and it got, like, all waterlogged. And I was, uh, I can't read this. So, it's so great that he, <clears throat> he found one for me. He sent me The Two Bear Mambo by Joe R. Lansdale. Um, this is a Happen Leonard adventure novel. I haven't read a Lansdale in a while, but I'm pretty sure this one is good. I gotta take my shoes off, man. Uh. And uh, <clears throat> the two that I'm was most stoked about. I don't know which one to show first. Richard Layman Into the Fire. I haven't read this one, so like, check this out, man. I'm just going to read. Pretty young Pamela was a very happy newlywed with a loving husband and a beautiful home. But all that changed the night Rodney broke in. He's been obsessed with Pamela since high school and now he intends to make her his slave for life. He thinks he'll be alone when he drives her out to the blazing desert. But someone else is out there too. Someone with a gun. Pamela hoped her nightmare was over when Rodney was shot. But something about her rescuer isn't quite right. Maybe it's the way he dropped Rodney's body into a pit, like he's done it before. Maybe it's the bus he's driving, with only mannequins for passengers. One thing is certain, she won't be prepared for what she'll find when he drives her to a tiny, isolated town baking in the desert sun. A town with very odd customs and a, a unique way of welcoming strangers. Man, I almost made it. Dude, that sounds so good. Let's drink to that. And Video Mas Massacre sent me Darkness Tell Us. I've read this before, and so I'll read the back of this one. It started as a game. Six college kids at a party. Then someone suggested they try the Ouija board. The board that Corey had hidden in the back of her closet and sworn never to touch again. Not after what happened last time. Not after Jake's death. They were only playing around, but the Ouija board worked all right. Maybe too well. A spirit who called himself Butler began to send them messages and make demands. Butler promised them a hidden treasure if only they would follow his directions and head off to a secluded spot in the mountains, a wild, isolated spot where nothing could be waiting for them. Where anything could be waiting for them, treasure or death or Butler himself. This, I, I remember really liking it and I don't remember it. But God damn it. <clears throat> I am in the man. Horror Master. And speaking of Masters, I'm reading this. Uh, dude, that cover is so awesome. By Ron Lim. There's there's a couple other Ron Lim covers in here, if I can find them real quick. Dude, he is so perfect for comics. I've talked about him before, I'm sure. But this, this whole story is like Thor is somewhere he lost his mind 
and um, Warlock and the Infinity Watch and the Silver Surfer are trying to stop him. And dude, it's scary how powerful the Surfer, I mean, how powerful Thor is. Because he could, I mean, he beats up Adam Warlock and the Surfer at the same time. And it's, it's really good. Oh, there's a, this comes so good. But let me get on to what I'm what I really want to talk about. Last night I read um Coach J in Hell, written by Mike Lignola, art by Ben Stenbeck, and this is so good, like automatically this is just This is just one of the best comics I've read in years. I'll just read you like so Coach J, he's in hell and uh this red dude, I don't know if you can see that. He tells him, like, you know, there's... <sighs> it's too much to explain, but, like... There's no more ruler in hell. Hell's pretty much like a empty space. I guess Pluto ran hell before Satan. And this guy's telling Koshche, he's like, you gotta do something about this, because Pluto's coming back. And Koshche tells him... Like he's a uh, okay. He's all, uh, and what's that to me? He will destroy everything. Everything has its time. Why should hell be any different? Till then, there are thirty-two libraries in this house, and beneath it is a wine cellar that extends for miles. <laughs> thirty-two libraries and like an endless supply supply of wine. What a, more do you need in hell? But uh, Koshche, he's. I'm trying to still get his the feeling for him. He's maybe like a cross between Conan the Barbarian, Cole, and just maybe like a more modern, I don't know, I can't even think of anyone who, maybe uh, just the way he looks, maybe like a Genghis Khan, but this is just an adventure through hell, and where he meets all these strange characters, Monsters, demons, and I just, I just ripped through it like so quickly. Um, yeah, I don't know what else is like. He meets the uh, these women on the shore, like of this ocean, and they're trying to. I think like. These skeletons, they wash up on the shore and their souls turn to snakes and they take the snakes and then they sacrifice them in fire to, I think, to Pluto. And then, uh, Frankie, what's wrong with you, Frankie? So, Koshche, uh, like, stop it. He fights these these uh, crab women, and one of them she had a little vial around her around her neck, and uh, it's a little oh, and he, yeah, this is so good. Like he defeats these crab women, and then uh, he meets this little demon that they had trapped in a bottle and like starved him, and he's like, "Let me out," and Koshche's like, "You're a demon. Like you can't trust the demon." And what does he say? He's like, uh... He just tells him, like, let me out. And, you know, I'll, I'll be your servant. And then, like, Koshche needs weapons. And, like, the demon's like, you can go over to, like, in this house. There's weapons. And then there's this fucking Bigfoot-looking dude that just bursts out of the door. And Koshche kills him. And he asks the little demon, he's all, did you know about him? And he says, their father, usually they keep him in a cage. He must have got out. And then Koshche says, anything else in there I should know about? Nothing bad, I swear. I love this little demon. He's he's such a little jerk. And he's so ugly and small. Uh, this is great. I don't want to give it all away, but... Oh, man, and then... Yeah, just... Koshche just fights... All these monsters... 
It's so good. He drops the ball. I, I, I guess, I mean, endings are hard. Maybe I haven't read everything. There's a goat. I thought the ending just kind of drifts off into, like, I don't... I was, uh, it, Coach Jay's not even in it at the end. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I guess. I don't know what's happening with him. Hopefully he's, like, reached a world where he can live peacefully. I mean, but I want to see him killing monsters and meeting up with Hellboy. But, man, this is one of the best things I've read since, I don't, since Koshe the Deathless, maybe. And I don't know if it should be a movie, but it could be. There's, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like this in movies or books or even comics. Like, comics are pretty terrible nowadays. There's a bright spot every once in a while. But, yeah, this is so good. I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Man of Sands of Fate. And I need a drink. Oh, where's my cap? So... Yeah, if you have, I, I don't know what else I can do to tell you to check out Kosh Chang. Or Layman. I gotta read that all into the fire, but. See, well, I'll just leave you. I'll just leave you. Bye bye, pervert.